about 15 US dollars. Yeah. Okay, so slightly new view this time around. Um, I bought myself a uh, Chinese headset and well, this cost me about uh, 100 yuan, uh, which is roughly about 61 ringgit or 15 US dollars. But this video, uh, video, video, okay, video, this video isn't so much about this headset as much as it is actually about this guy. Uh, well, I'm not sure how many of you are actually audiophiles, but this is my, the uh, cost. KFC 75s and these sound amazing. Okay, they sound really good. The problem is that, uh, well, number one, they're cabled. Not to say that that's a problem, but one of the main problems I had is because it kept snagging and uh, these kind of don't really work anymore in the sense that uh, if you just wiggle the cable, like this cable a little bit, or was it this one? I can't remember which side it was the audio would keep cutting out. So, well, I, I thought to myself, what if I desoldered these bits and spliced it together with this and made myself a truly wireless sports headset from Coast using the Coast 75s, well, KSC 75s. Yeah, I think that would be pretty interesting, so that is the project for today. The first thing that you probably want to do first is to make sure that the Bluetooth headset that you got is working fine. It would be extremely unfortunate if you did all that work just to transplant it onto a faulty or broken headset. In my case, I just paired it with my phone and played some audio with it. We do a more power efficiency. And with that, I can verify that it's working perfectly fine. Now that that is tested, let's prepare the KSC-75s for desoldering. What I'm going to do first is to remove the ear hooks by just pulling them off, then removing the foam padding by slowly working around it. From there, I remove the piece of grey plastic above the drivers to expose the wiring and the solder joints. I carefully unsecure the cable from the drivers, taking note where each wire belongs, in this case, ground is on the left while the other colored cable goes to the right. Then to start my soldering process, I put on some soldering flux onto both the solder joints. This is to ensure that I don't heat it up more than necessary. Using a pair of needle nose forceps and my soldering iron set to 300 degrees Celsius, I touch the solder joints for a split second just to quickly liquefy the solder so that I can remove both wires. Solder melts at about 220 to 250 degrees Celsius, so 300 Celsius is a bit overkill, but it's never a good idea to have prolonged heat on sensitive equipment. So this is how I usually do it, by having a higher heat but with as short a contact time as I can. Now that we have the first driver desoldered, we move on to the second one where I repeat the very same process. Unsecure the cable, take note of the wire positioning, which is the same as before, Apply a bit of flux, hold the cable with my forceps, then proceed to touch the solder joints with my iron for a brief second to desolder it. We are now halfway there and now we will be taking apart the original earbuds for the Bluetooth earphones to expose the cables. I take note of which side is left and which is right and disassembling the earphones was as easy as just pulling the earbuds apart. We can now see the wires soldered onto the driver, so just like before, I apply a bit of soldering flux onto it, hold the wires with my forceps, then desolder them by touching the joint for a split second. I'll undo this knot. This was here to prevent any unwanted tugging on the solder joints. Then I'll slide the original housing off. From here, it's pretty much the reverse of what I did before. Ground is to the right, while colored is to the left. As usual, a bit of flux on both the drivers and the wires, and I'll start by soldering back the colored cable. Again, just a touch for a split second, as that's all it needs, and we'll repeat the process for the ground wire. Wrap the new cable back around, this prevents any tugging to happen on our new joint, and we're done with this side, so we'll do exactly the same on the other. 
Moment of truth before I put it back together, I like to pair it with my phone first and blast the music just as reassurance that I didn't mess up in the process. Everything checks out perfectly with music coming out of both sides, so I can proceed to reassemble it, putting the foam padding back on and the ear clips that allow it to sit on my ears without falling off. And just as a little follow up on this project, the Bluetooth headset that I got uh, kicked the bucket. It died extremely quickly. Yeah, okay, so this is kind of what you get when you purchase cheap Bluetooth earphones online to do the project with. So I guess it pays to go with a brand name of sorts. Again, what I did was the same process again, this time transplanting it to a uh, basis S30 instead, and it's working perfectly fine now. Slight complications aside though, I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. If you did, give it a like. Have you done similar mods yourself? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you've got any questions, you can also drop them there or hit me up on Twitter or Facebook. Hit the bell icon to get notified for uh, when any of my new videos go live. And remember to hit the subscribe button. My name is Yang aka Tech Roden, who really enjoys these kinds of DIY modding of his gear. Signing off.